Welcome back. This is number 10 of the series. Let me make sure that I am recording. I am. A couple of things to uh, demonstrate. First of all is, if you go to YouTube and do a search on Colossus, the Forbin Project, do a return, And there is somewhere the movie. Missile, these are clips. The full movie, here it is, in 4K. Let's check it. Oh, one day ago. I was using, I was looking at a previous one, but why all this uh, uploads all of a sudden? Let's start it. You won't be able to hear the sound. It's done by Universal. Let's see if this thing, let's look at the uh, definition here. Quality is auto. It's not done in 4K. In fact, it's a very poor. Let's see. Four hours ago. We'll start off with the same. <laughs> nope, that's not. These are all, why would y'all do a low quality? What's the best you can do? Anyway, find the best quality you can and watch it because there's some interesting stuff in there. Stuff, some interesting concept. It's a science fiction thing. Oh, this is a, one of these and this is one of them that's uh, it's not the movie you have to go off to some site but anyway there's a copy of it the movie done in 1970 about computers and uh, I highly recommend it secondly let's look at some uh, image and some video software that's available under under Linux. First of all is if you have any pictures and I think I have a couple here. If you want to look at image there's a program that I love called G Thumb. So you install it apt install G T H U M B G Thumb. And I've already installed it. It does not come pre-installed. Now, I want to look at these two images. So I do a G, thumb. And if there's more than two, you don't want to list them all. You can just say, do the wild card splat, and which is an asterisk. And it says, I'm going to look at all of the files uh, in this directory. These are all JPEG. So it comes up with a warning. And we load the two images and you see the two here and the rest of the space is blank because it'll show you thumbnails of every image that you've got. This is a picture. If you click on it, left click on it, it will go and expand in this space View, this is a viewer down in the left hand side of the image you'll see that there's a blue box around the first image and it shows you that this is one of two it is 1080 by 720 okay is the original size but that's not the size shown here and it occupies 193.1 kilobytes of memory and I'm showing the whole the whole image here in this viewing space. This is a tennis ball. And this is the system that I'm running on right now. The Orange Pi 5 Plus in the the uh, what what's the uh, 52pi.com case with the cooling fan, the thermal um, the uh, cooling fans and then this is the this is the 
I guess it's, I'd call it the back size. Here's your two USB 2.0, three HDMI, and the two Ethernet. Plus, here's the USB-C power port. The other photograph is the other side. Um, so this is your little system. Oh, I'll come back and show you a photograph of um, the setup with the monitor when I get a chance to do that. So if you want to, oh, uh, man, I knew there was something I forgot. There, there are some, you need to read the manual on the thing, the software. But there are some options up here to uh, manipulate it. You can rotate it left, rotate right, <coughs> convert convert the format. You can resize it. You can change the date on it. You can make it a uh, uh, web. Oh, let's see here. There's some other stuff. You can look at the, you can delete, you can make, reduce the size of the file by deleting the metadata. Um, so. These are things that you can do to, to the image. And there's some other software, too. We'll get to it. Oh, well, let's just get to it now. Another package to install is sudo. Let me clear this because it's got... A, it's going to get a warning message anytime, but don't worry about it. I am now running Debian version of Linux on the Orange Pi 5 Plus because I was having trouble with Ubuntu. So I just went back and in 15 minutes re reloaded uh, or swapped out Ubuntu and put in Debian. And this program was broken in Ubuntu. Can't live without it, so I won't be going back to Ubuntu. But you may want to play with both of them, both versions of Linux, C1 Shorns which one you like better. Another package to install is Image Magic. Let's do apt install image M A G E M A G I C K and hit return and it says it's already installed. That's because I did it so I could demo it. If you go to the web and look up the man page on it, here it is. It's a free software suite for the creation, modification, and display of bitmap images. So you can convert input file to an output file. Okay. And right here, you it can read, convert, and write images in a variety of formats, about 100. Uh, a variety is an understatement. But it works with GIF, JPEG, PNG, PDF, Photo CD, TIFF, just just a few. The programs themselves are listed here. Convert is convert between image formats. So you can have uh, an image that you downloaded or you created or you got from your camera. And you can resize it. You can blur it. You can crop it. You can despeckle, dither, draw on it, flip it, join, resample. Sorry, I had to pause and sneeze. Uh, do an identify, which describes the format. Mogrify, resize, do the, all this other stuff. And mogrify overwrites the original image. So... If you want to keep the original, then use convert. Composite, you can overlap one image over another. Uh, create a composite image using montage. All these are command line uh, vers programs, utilities. You can compare two uh, images mathematically and visually annotate the difference. The first thing that comes to my mind here is to look to see if a 
photograph could possibly be a fake. That is, it's been uh, photoshopped uh, using AI or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, stream, display. Let's see, what does it uh, displays an image or an image sequence on the next server, which is what we have. Animate, you can create animation. Uh, import, this is interesting, saves any visible window on the next server. That's what we're looking at here is a full screen. You, and now it puts it, it as an image file. You can capture a single window, say one of these, if I wanted to demonstrate something. Or you can do the entire screen. Or I can crop or select any rectangular portion of the image. And interprets and executes scripts written in magic scripting language. So there's another book to read or whatever. Things of interest. Let's go back. Uh, oh, uh, let's try this. The LS here, I've got a JPEG. What if you need a PNG? So let's convert image. Space is nice. Image underscore 0021 dot JPEG. Let's convert it to uh, picture dash 01 dot PNG. It did. Let's look at G thumb again because it's so pretty to look at. My little system. Colossus. Here we go. Let's see which one. This is uh, this is the JPEG. This is the other side, and here is whoops. How it? Wait, did was the first one PNG? Oh, the first one. No, no, this one's PNG. I just I did it take a second to convert the name. I, anyway, so. If you need PNG instead of JPEG, uh, it's now it increased the size to 1.1 megabytes, so that file format is is larger. If you have a PNG, you can convert it to uh, JPEG. So that takes care of some images, and you can do some image processing. And I don't. That's beyond the scope of this course. If I find some neat application to use for it in our research, then I'll come back and do a video. You're probably wondering how in the world is Chuck Adams generating these YouTube videos? I would like to do that. Well, you can because the software is on the system. You have to install it. You have to do a sudo install oh I never better get the apt apt install simple screen recorder and it says it's already on there but I I don't remember whether it came with the system or not just assume it's not there and try to install it doesn't cost you anything to use it, you go over here to your pull down memory, uh, pull down menu, go down to multimedia, and here it is here. Now I'm going to try something. I've got simple screen recorder already running one time. I haven't tried this. Let's see if I can record the recording. And it says, there it is, and I've got. Look up here in the taskbar. Here it is here. Here it is running. Another okay. Let's go back to this and let's get this one running if we if we can. Two we're gonna have two tasks competing for the uh, video stream on this computer. Continue. So the input pro profile there are none. Okay, well, I'm going to record the entire screen. 
and I only have one screen. I guess it can do two. All screens. This one's this is a 43 inch 1080p, so its screen size is 1920 pixels horizontally and 1080 pixels vertically. Frame rate here is 30 per second. The audio, I'm using a Yeti blue uh, microphone and you can you can record the audio off of the audio processor in the system if you're playing YouTube or uh, want to get the audio from somewhere else. So continue and you place here where you're going to uh, write the video to, I'm generating an MP format. So I can generate MKV, MPV, MP4, WebM, OGG, and then I can do others. But I, for YouTube, you want to do MP4. I do not want to write it to this file because that's the one being created by the other version. So, and then you do a continue. Let me, let me just do this. Let me make this uh, demo. Oops, MP4, and uh, that looks all good. So continue, and you're all set up to record. I like to start the preview, and this shows me the screen. What shows me what I'm going to be recording? It also shows my audio level for my microphone. You can leave that on and then you go up here and do a start recording. Because I'm scared, I'm not going to do this. So I'm going to kill this off because I'm already recording here. So that's how you uh, create a, an image, a, a video. Now, do I have any other videos? I think that's... Uh, Let's see, did I, oh, I have a project, open shot, let's see, CD, open, whoops, I got my mouse in the way, I uh, see, I can't type, y'all think I'm an idiot, but that's okay. Oh, this is just the source. I downloaded the source to this program, but it comes with uh, the distribution so you can do it, or it's available. sudo apt install open open shot dash q q t and it's installed because I installed it. Let me show you what it's capable of. And this is what I use to generate the YouTube video compatible version of the video that will play there and that you are observing. So if I start it up, open, I'm telling you, open shot dash QT, okay, goes through, it's a open source uh, package. comes up looking like this. Let me make it uh, full screen. And it has an area here for the files that I'm going to edit. Uh, you can see some little stripes here that are bleed through or on my monitor. Interesting. So let's do an open file and let's do an import and let's convert some image. Now, uh, I should have generated a temporary one, but let's go. Let's let's go to videos. And I have oh, I have two versions. One I started earlier and I quit because I, because of something. Let's just edit this one. So I will click on left click on it. Let's select it and I will open it. It's not a valid video, audio, or image file. Oh, 
Okay. Let's do an open. Let's see. I don't. I don't. I don't think I can import something that's currently being being created. This other one is. Uh, let's look at. Let me make this a little bit larger, and let's see. Make the size here. Yeah, this one right here is the one that's currently being. Why did it, oh, let's see if I got a problem here. Open. Oh, it did take it. So now this is the file where the video is. Now I want to process it. So I'm, there are multiple track uh, areas down here. If you have multiple videos, you can you can put one down here in track one and move it up adjacent there then if I had, then it shows me over here the start of the video um, then it, if I move to another track I if I have another video here I can bring it down and then move it down the track this is timeline here you move it down to the track to append it to the end of this one you can do it on the same track or on a separate track, and I usually do them on a separate track. Then, after you get the get it all set up, you can edit. There are facilities here to to uh, cut, do markers, and other things. So, read the manual. Go and look if, see if there's any YouTube. There are YouTube's. There's YouTube's on everything. So go and. Do your research. I do simple stuff, so I'm not doing anything complicated. Then you go down here and say export the project. Move over here, export export the video. Then you give it a name like Orange Pie Pie Five Plus. I like putting a semicolon there, and then demo, and then the folder path. That's where I want to put it. I'm going to put it in my videos. Now, profile. I want to go and make this a web video. Target. I can go to Instagram, Twitter, which I guess is now X, whatever. But I'm going to go to YouTube HD. And it shows that the video profile is 1080p. 23.98 frames per second. Um, let's do, let's do, I think 29.97 is preferred. Uh, I've, I've been doing 30, 30 frames per second. Let's leave it at 30. So you can set the frame rate. Quality, if you want to save space, then you can make a low quality video, which is probably what happened to Colossus uh, or Medium. I, I do all mine in high, so when you're looking at these videos, um, make it full screen so you can see all the details. When you get that set up, you just do an export video. It could not open a right file. Uh, that's probably due to uh, whatever. It's, I don't know why why that occurred it killed it killed it so oh there's an error, there's a series of error messages here it's probably because the the uh, system uh let's see load error glx failed to create uh, screw, failed to load driver um i'm gonna have to do go and uh, get the drivers and everything for the rock chip uh, 3588 okay platform please rock chip rk3588 enough we can we can fix this that's not that's no problem let's see where i am on my time 24 minutes oh there's one more thing to look at and if you want to look at pdfs we're going to create PDFs later. There's a lot of PDFs. Oh, one of them I already showed you uh, when we downloaded the C book. Uh, we're going to use a program called Events.
So sudo apt install evince and it's installed. Let's go to, I created a directory called manuals. I went to the web and I downloaded uh, Kernighan's book again here, the C programming language. So I'll do events, the C, I'll do wildcarding, and this will bring up a window. Let me maximize it. Let, let, let me get the page. Left click here on this pull down menu, get it to fit the page. And there, there it is in beautiful color. Do a space bar to read the book, the programming language. Uh, here it is. Right here. This is done in 1988. Run through here is introduction to see some stuff about the Unix system, but most of it will be apropos to Linux. There's a reference manual, the standard libraries, uh, standard io.h, string.h, math.h down here. Uh, so if you want to know what's in those uh, header files, uh, this is a good good source. They're probably not up to date. Uh, Brian Kernahan uh, said that he was thinking about a third edition, but uh, he wasn't going to guarantee any any production thereof. And I think because this. Uh, because I got the system loaded down, this uh, page response is slow, but here it is. Let's see if I can highlight this. I cannot. Oh, I can. But it, I, I don't think, I'm pretty sure it's not uh, text. So uh, there is, I pointed to GitHub. You can get all the uh, solutions to the problems, and you can probably find all these uh, demo programs already typed in. What is interesting, let me go now the, use the back arrow to back up. Let me go back to the table of con contents. I can look at it on the left hand side. All right. Load. Uh, what I wanted to point out something. I had a memory lapse here. It'll probably come to me. What was it going to... Huh. Forget it. Enough. Uh, I've got a, I've got a data sheet here on the RK3588. So let's look at it. I download this off the Orange, Orange Pie page. And up here, let's make it fit the page, fit page. Gives you all the information on the RK3588 rock chip. It has two quad, two quad core ARM Cortex. Maybe we want it back to a, a larger size. It has here a quad core A76 processor and a quad core A55. The A76 is the one that gives us the 2.4 gigahertz speed and the A55 gives us the 1.8. There's a graphics pro processor does OpenGL. Um, memory can handle 64 bits and here is a block diagram for the chip itself. You can see here's the, here's the quad core. 
I'll come back and discuss this. The A76, which is the one I'm running all the prime programs in, uh, has 64K level 1 uh, instruction and data caches. That's what the I slash D. If you're not used to reading the jargon, it'll confuse you. And I'll get confused on some of this because it's new tech talk technology and I haven't spent the time looking at all the guts of the internal internals. I, I've got enough work to do to just use it as a tool and I can bring it to its knees. That meaning there's a lot of stuff I'm not going to get done. But anyway, there are two, two buses, for in, one for instruction, one for data, and there's 64K um, cache uh, memory in this area of the for this core then there's a level two cache what happens is let's say that the your programs out here in um, memory I hear external memory interface there's the EMMC5 and then down here is the uh, for LPDDs where's my uh, uh, that's EMMC where is my NVIDIA, NVMe, somewhere, multimedia, there's a display controller. Anyway, there's a memory for maybe one of these. In Anyway, your external memory, say the uh, NVMe one terabyte solid state drive, the uh, program's out here. It has to be read from memory into these levels of cache to get to execution within the quad core. And your program's divided up into pages. So many pages can go into this cache and you're competing with all the other tasks on the system for room in the cache. You can get part of your program in here. Then as you start executing, it brings in the first few pages. Then those can get into the level one and then you actually get into the execution and uh, you're off and running. And whenever you execute everything that's in a, in a page and you need to go to the next page, then it tries to get it here. If it's a page that's not here, then it's got to go back to memory, bring it up, and it's, it's multi-level. I mentioned that my little primes program is real small. We will look at how small it is and see how much of it takes up these cache. And then there's a, what's the other, oh, this is the typical application. Oh, by the way, this RK3588 is a silicon uh, system on chip processor and it has all this stuff in here in different versions of the RK series and other ARM controllers or processors have varying block diagrams and it's too much for me to handle and go through but if you're a double E student or a computing science student professor may uh, cover this in a hardware related class by the way I am 15 kilometers away in northern Phoenix from the new TMSC plant, Taiwan Semicon, Taiwan TMSC, TSMC, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company plant. First, it's in the first phase, which is twenty billion dollars. They bought a fourteen hundred and forty acres of the desert in Arizona, and they've got this plant that's huge. Maybe. It's, uh, I can drive by there sometime and take a picture. Uh, they will not. I, I suggested to a group that maybe they could go uh, take their little drones and go out there and fly over the and take pictures of the plant, but you most likely will get shot down. The security out there is pretty tight. Have I covered enough? Uh, there's 34 minutes. Let me show you the current status of the Primes program. There it is. I'm 
Oh, I got the processor up to 50 degrees, and that's probably because that it well, that's not probably, it's because of the video processing. Uh, now that I'm using the video processing uh, components of the chip, it, it consumes more power and it heats up. And that's the 50 degrees is not a not a bad uh, not a bad temperature it's warm as you like uh, down here look at uh, here you can see the four versions of prime primes running and I'm taking up 740k I have to go back and I, I took away the display of the manual and how many how much of that can I get in the cache? I think I can get it all in the, the level three. Pretty sure. Another video later. Since I'm here, let's go to the project, do an LS, and you can see here that I've got 59 files of prime numbers generated. A new command, du, man, du, this, the disk, estimate file space usage, okay, it says estimate because it's, it's probably going to miss a little bit. I want to see how much space I am taking up in this directory. So what I do is display usage minus s, give me a summary, put it at, put it out, write it out, print it out in human form, in megabytes, gigabytes, and I want the current working directory. That's everything here, which is all the out files, the make files, and all the, the source code and everything is just minuscule, and I got to back up, but do a minus H, and this shows me that this project is now taking up 28 gigabytes of my one terabyte hard drive. If I do a display file system minus H shows me that here for the solid state drive whoops, I'm taking up 67 gigabytes out of that 67 gigabytes, 28 gigabytes up here is for this one directory. But I'm still using only 8% of the total of the drive. So I'm nowhere close to uh, running out of space. I'm running out of time. Now let's see, I've got, remember my little my little gaps program. Let me let me do a make gaps. And let me do a now I wanna look at the the gaps. Remember our prime gaps for all these files. So I'll cat star dot out pipe that to gaps and this will go through we've done this before start showing us the gap size and then the starting by prime number for that gap and if I take the starting number add the gap size that'll get the next closest prime number and there's a bunch of mathematicians that have spent a lot of time determining how what is the largest gap possible for prime numbers and I think they're down to 700 maybe I'll let you research so it would be interesting to plot this and when I get to the facility for plotting we will do that in the meantime, I'm just going to let this thing run. Uh, another interesting thing here is, does it show here? What's my other utility to look at processes? Well, I can do a PS, 
this will show me this. If I do a PSA, this will show me my all my processes done by Adams. And here you will see the four versions of Prime's running. Okay. And they've been running 217 minutes each, which is more than three hours. And let's see how close we are to being finished. Let's look at the O59.out. Tail O59.out shows me that we are up to, 50, let's just take this one. That's 58,814,666,159. That is a prime number. I'm going to 59, so that means I'm 81% through in 217 minutes so you can figure out what the total time is going to take and we are just compare this number to 2 to the 64 minus 1 and how many more files I'm going to have to generate to get them all uh, even with this much compute power error, if I went to my gaming machine and did this, it's going to take years, decades, centuries. Let me leave you with that thought. Thank you for your time. I'm uh, at 41 minutes. That's going to be my average, it looks like now. So in this lecture, we've covered looking at PDF files. Also, events is also capable of looking at uh, deja vu files, DJVU, and other file types. Go to the web and get the download events. Download every PDF file you can on the Rock Chip RK3588. Download the C programming books that you want and download the GCC uh, compiler, the C compiler uh, book, because it's going to be huge. And I'm sorry I blew through the man page on GCC, but there were a bunch of other processors besides the RK3588. I mentioned the Motorola. There's probably the, there's the X86, probably the Z80, bunch of old microprocessors. When you use the C compiler to generate a binary that executes on another system, that's called cross compilation. The smaller system doesn't have an, doesn't run Linux. It can't run the C compiler, so you have to do it on this system then transfer it via cable, program, ROMs, or load it into memory and get it to run over there. So that's another function that's capable of being done on the OP5 system. Thank you. I'll be back pretty soon.